Hi folks, today we're looking at the tangent function. Um, so we're going to sketch it from 0 to 360 degrees. Uh, and uh, to do that, maybe I'll just figure out some of the values that are on the unit circle. So give me a sec here and I'll put those in. So there's a unit circle with some tangent values put on it. Obviously there are infinitely many. Um, but let's just try and make a graph out of that. So I'm going to mark 90, 180, 270, and 360. Okay. And I know that the tangent at 0 is 0. The tangent at 30 degrees is 1 over root 3. So that's about 0.57-ish around there. At 45 degrees, the tangent is 1. At 60 degrees, the tangent is root 3, which is 1.7-ish. And then at 90 degrees, we don't know. Okay, so there's 1, 2, if I were to go the other way, uh, after 90 degrees, I'd be at 120. That's the next key point that's shown. And it's negative root 3, so that's negative 1.73-ish. Here's 135 would be at negative 1. And 150 would be at negative 0.5-ish. And 180 is going to be at 0. Um, what happens at those undefined values is that you get vertical asymptotes. So the actual function looks like this. There we go. And it's going to do the same sort of thing over here to 0. And at 270, you'll have another vertical asymptote. And we'll do this sort of almost like disco dance move looking thing. And we called this a Travolta as a cubic last year. Um, the tangent function is a little bit different in that it has asymptotes and also in that it does not go horizontal at sort of the midpoint of the graph. So here, we've got the graph from 0 to 360. Um, we could also follow it backwards a little bit. It looks like this. One thing you might notice about the graph of tangent is that it repeats itself every 180 degrees instead of every 360. So its period is shorter. Um, I'm going to draw the version of tangent that I would sort of keep in my mind palace. And all I really care about is, where are those asymptotes? And of course, we're going to be thinking in radians here. So instead of 90 degrees, we'll write pi over 2. Okay. And this is one cycle of the graph. If you wanted to show some key points, the tangent of 45 is 1. And the tangent of negative 45 degrees is negative 1. Okay. That's enough to sort of keep it straight. We're not going to get as hung up on, um, on tangent graphs as we did with sine and cosine um, because they're not quite as common as an application. You often use the tangent function, or you might solve a problem that involves tangent, um, but to actually graph them, I don't know. So, characteristics of y equals tan x. It's periodic with a period of 180 or pi radians. It has vertical asymptotes at negative pi over 2, at pi over 2, at 270 degrees. So that's 3 pi over 2s, and it'll just repeat every pi units. Its domain is broken up. It does not exist everywhere. So x, uh, not element of, we'll assume that we're talking about the real number system. But x can't be pi over 2 or any periodic buddy of pi over 2. So it can't be pi over 2 or pi over 2 plus any multiple of pi, where n could be an integer here. Uh, the range is all real numbers. So we don't talk about amplitude when we talk about a tangent function, because it goes up forever. It's got a y-intercept of 0, and it's got key points of negative pi over 4, negative 1, and pi over 4, 1. I have never seen the IB ask anyone to sketch a tangent function. Um, it's in here, but probably we'll just be using it to solve problems. So that brings us to being able to talk about the explicit form of 10. Um, so A is going to be our vertical stretch factor. Vertical stretch factor. Stretch by a factor of A or the absolute value of A. Uh, negative A means an x-axis reflection. We won't say the word amplitude, though, here. 
Okay. B is going to be horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over B. And that actually ends up being more helpful with the tangent than the corresponding stuff about period. B, of course, also controls period because it controls the horizontal stretchiness of it. Period for a tangent function is going to be pi over B because the default period is pi, not 2 pi. The C is your shift, and the D is your lift. There is kind of a midline to it or some symmetry to it, but we don't get too carried away. All right, so in my mind palace, this is what I'm holding dear. y equals 10x basically looks like this, pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, asymptotes, and that this sort of look. So if I were to graph negative 10x, that would tell me that I have an x-axis reflection. So I take the basic one, and I just shift it upside down. An x-axis reflection doesn't do anything to the asymptotes, because if you flip a vertical asymptote upside down, it still looks the same. Okay. So I'm OK if all you show here is that it's going through the origin, and that instead of going up as we go to the right, it appears to be going down. All right, next one. This 2 in front of the x, that's got horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over 2. You could also say that it's telling you that the period is pi over 2. But it's the stretch that's going to help you change the asymptotes. Totes. Okay. So this will look a lot like our basic one. But the locations of the asymptotes are going to be smushed in. Normally, they're at pi over 2. Okay. But it's going to be a half as wide. So pi over 2 times a half. Oh my gosh, the asymptote's going to be at pi over 4. And same on the other side, negative pi over 4. So now it will look like this. It didn't have any reflection. And you might be saying, well, hold on now. I thought you said that it's going to have a period of pi over 2. Let's think about this. If we were to figure out how wide this is, it's pi over 4 here and pi over 4 here. Oh my gosh, the whole thing is 2 quarters of a pi wide or pi over 2. Okay. So it does uh, correspond to the period that we expected. Well, we just get there by moving our asymptotes where they need to be. Let's try a couple of other ones. 3 plus tan x. So this is going to be, I guess it's worth mentioning here that we might prefer to see this as tan x plus 3, because we like to see those vertical lifts last. There's actually a good reason for drawing it this way or for writing the graph this way. If I put it as 3 plus 10x, I can't mistake whether the 3 is being tangented, if you want to call that a verb. It's only the x that gets tan applied to it. So if we put it the other way around, we should probably put a bracket around x just to be really, really clear that it's only the x that we're applying the tangent to. Aside from that, this isn't that bad. It's got no changes other than that, so that means its asymptotes are going to be in the expected places. And instead of going through the origin, it's just going to be moved 3 up. So let's see. It'll go up like this and go down like that. Lastly, we've got tan of x minus pi over 2. So this is moving pi over 2 to the right. That's the only change that's being made compared to the basic one. So let me just draw yet again what the basic one is that I'm holding in my mind. Pi over 2, negative pi over 2. That's the basic one. If I take that whole thing and shift everything over, pi over 2 to the right, well, where's this guy going to go? 
pi over 2 to the right of negative pi over 2 would be just at 0. Where's this one, which was 0, 0, going to go? It'll go pi over 2 to the right. And so that's where that point will be. And where will this go? It'll go pi over 2 to the right. Now let's think about that. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2. That'll be 2 pi over 2. Oh my gosh, that's just at 1 pi. So if you want to call it 2 pi over 2, that's OK. So it's the basic thing just moved over. There's one cycle. Now, of course, these things repeat. So if you needed to show more of it, you could use the fact that this is periodic with a period of pi because it hasn't had its period messed with. There's no coefficient of x. So these asymptotes will just recur every pi units forever and ever. So I'd have something that looks like this and this and this and going on and on forever and ever. And I could find the locations of each of these x-intercepts if I wanted to. We just want a very basic sort of idea of what the graph looks like. There's a little bit of practice on this on page 529. Uh, number 1, A, B, C, E, and then number 2. Good luck with the material, folks, and take care.